Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. What is a song that never made it to the top 40, but really should have been a number one? The obvious answer to this question is a song that Magazine, the band Magazine, released as a single in 1980, and it's called A Song from Under the Floorboards. It's a it's baffling that it never entered the charts either in England or United States. Um, yeah, never. I know, Rodney, it never did. No, I was asking, is that the question for tonight? I thought it was something different. All right. Oh, you didn't think the, the question? Never was... mind. Just go on with the show. And the minute the minute you say it's one of these top 40 questions, I tune out anyway. So All go right. ahead. Yeah, that's the question. Songs that this is, a, you know, it. It's one of Howard DeVoto's best songs, he uh, lyric wise and music wise. Uh, the, it's it's supposedly based. Well, he says it's based on uh, the character in Notes from the Underground, Dostoevsky's nineteenth uh, century Russian literature masterpiece, and. Uh, let's see, the, the, the opening line is, <laughs> I am angry, I am ill, and I'm ugly as sin. My irritability keeps me alive and kicking. It's got a very soaring, beautiful melody for, uh, for the verse, and then a catchy sing-songy, uh, chorus. And it's, all, it was released as a single, but it was also released on their third album, The Correct use of soap um <laughs> how it never made it to any of the charts i don't know but it's it's probably hit hit uh, landed in at least a million years by now uh it's one of their most famous songs the band magazine and easily as good as anything that genesis or peter gabriel or phil collins put up in the charts in the 80s <laughs> And that's my answer. A song from under the floorboards. Cool. Um, I must have misunderstood the question. I thought. Yeah, was, I think because it could be any song. I wasn't sure if it was like a song that was in the top 40 that didn't mm. make it to a number one or a song that wasn't even yeah. any number. No. Well, I, I, I did send out a different question at first, but then Rodney said I already asked that question. So I yeah, but this one that you just asked. Even yeah, what is a song that never made it to the top 40, but really should have been? At but least I, the top 40. I think, I think you had said it, it was number one. Yeah, yeah. it was it kept out of the number, number one, one spot by another true. song. That's what I thought it was, too. Yeah. Go, go ahead and answer it that way. Well, yeah, yeah. What, I'm, what I was wondering is if it was a song that was in the top 40, but never mm -hmm. made it to one, versus never in any That's 40. Right. So my answer for the within the top 40 but never number one was any kink song apparently they never had a number one <laughs> uh but i also kind of like that because i don't care about the top 40 of any era um and it never made sense to me anyway how do they even come up with it can we have a big question about how the hell they come up with this top 40 <laughs> boobs 40. <laughs> I think it's 40s? a combination of sales and airplay, at least back in back then it was. Uh, it's and bribery. It's hilarious because people were getting paid to play. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically billboard, I guess, right? Invented yeah, if you think you're going to write a nice little song and then it's going to go up to the top of the charts, you're a moron. <laughs> you're, just, you're an idiot. You don't deserve to have whatever instrument you're using to write that song or, or even hands to write it with. Incidentally, the, the Kinks have a song called Top of the Pops that's great, and it kind of like, kind of touches on this subject. Um, although the, the, in the song, like, they, you know, they say, like, congratulations, you've got a number one song. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so I, uh, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's really weird anyway, because they had a bunch of hits, just never a number one 
I guess because the stupid Beatles were always there. Yeah, I hate the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> Even that song Superman didn't make it to number one. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. I guess not. Or Come Dancing. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I didn't do that much looking into it, but I believe it. About five, those songs are bad enough to go number one. Those, was, those songs was, are terrible. It was on the Billboard website. It said zero number one hits. Huh. So that's my answer. All anything. <laughs> um, so, well, I answered it the way I, I mean, I understood Joe's second round version of the question was, which it did seem a little strange because it's just wide open. It's like, well, what's my one of my favorite bands and what's one of my favorite songs from that favorite band and let's let's talk about that song so the song i chose um is a song that kind of sounds like it could have come from a earlier era the song actually joe my song is also released in 1980 and it's from an album uh called <clears throat> underwater moonlight and it's by the soft boys it's called positive vibrations um it sounds um like it could come from like the late 60s. It has that psychedelic sound. It's kind of like a cross between a psychedelic song, a power pop track, and a punk rock anthem. Mm -hmm. um, it has been said, uh, Peter uh, Buck from uh, REM said that the song itself was a major influence on the early REM sounds. Um, and it was certainly popular on college radio in the early 80s, but it never made the charts either here. It probably didn't make the charts in England either. Um, and if you listen to the lyric, or you, I'll provide a link to the lyrics. So the lyrics are actually a little darker than the song Positive Vibrations might indicate, so it's kind of funny. Um, the band itself, uh, the members of the band, well, well the main uh, member is Robin Hitchcock, who went on to a kind of a quirky solo career. I mean, he's, he's had several bands over the years, but um, another, the other guitar player was Kimberly Rue, who went on to be uh, famous in the band Katrina and the Waves, Walking on Sunshine. Um, and the bass player uh, is a guy named Matthew Seligman, who played with Thomas Dolby, the Thompson Twins, and uh, according to his Wikipedia page, he even played with David, David Bowie, I guess, the bass player for the Live Aid performance in 1985. Um, sadly, Matthew Seligman, I believe, and I remember this, is he's one of the first people, one of the first musicians that I saw a story about online that died from COVID in, in uh, 2020. He got COVID in April of 2020 and died that month. So um, anyway, so yeah. Positive Vibrations by the band The Soft Boys, released in 1980 from the album Underwater Moonlight. That's my answer. I just realized that the way the question is, you could pick any song from Gigi Allen's Suck My Ass It Smells all the way up through IMX's Insomnia, and, and it, would, it would fit. Um, I made the question better. I make everything better because yeah, I'm just one of those people. I made the question better, and I made it. Um, pick a song that was kept out of the number one spot by a more inferior song. And there's a, there's only one answer for this. And I, we all know what it's going to be. But I'm using the Connecticut rule. And the Connecticut rule is, if you have to name the top 10 states by their consumption of Peruvian giant yellow leg centipedes, it's Connecticut. <laughs> Those people consume 14 pounds per capita, per person annually, of, of the uh, Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede. And there's not even a second state. There's not even a state that even comes close. It's the answer. It's, it's what's called the Connecticut rule. So here we go. I hate to go back to the 80s, people, because uh, I spend my life trying to drag us all away from the 80s. And the 80s were a horrible, horrible time. And, and music did suck then. But I am going to say this. Uh, and this is an example of how bad music was in the 80s. In 1981, the first real year of the 80s, uh, Vienna by Ultravox was kept out of the number one spot by the song Shut Up a You Face by Joe Dulce. Um, now, <laughs> if you kids watching this don't know who Joel Dulce was, Joel Dulce was an Australian, which meant he's probably killed a lot of people, probably killed a lot of backpackers, probably put their bodies in oil drums and left them out in the outback. But Joel Dulce was an Australian <clears throat> singing in a terrible 
borderline offensive Italian accent, the song called Shut Up a You Face. And it's if you haven't heard it, we're not going to put up a link because it's terrible. And it kept Vienna out of the number one spot. At first, it was kept out by the John Lennon song Woman, which is a terrible song. I mean, that's basically like like sub Barry Manilow songwriting level. It's just awful. But like, what's worse than that? Shut up a you face. Uh, Vienna is one of the, the greatest songs ever written. It's absolutely brilliant. And uh, to, to be kept out by a song, it's like, what's the matter? You got you no respect. It is it is terrible. So that is that is there's only one answer for this. If you're asking about a song that was kept out of the numbers one spot by a worse song, and that is the universally accepted answer. So I was a little lazy by using the universally accepted answer, but I did make the question better. So. Well, I will tell you, as a child, I got quite a kick out of that Joe Dolce song. Vienna, who is named after the song Vienna, people don't don't do the math at home. Um, actually, um, her mom would walk around the house singing that song a lot. And then I had to tell her, I said, that kept Vienna out of the number one spot. I somehow never heard that song. Don't you don't want to hear it. your face? It's probably oh, why I you can write it. songs is you've never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's lowered my songwriting ability. <laughs> Just knowing it exactly. <clears throat> you mean you mean you mean shut up at your face, right? And not uh and not uh Vienna, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Joe, as an Italian American, just avoid that song. It's very <laughs> minimal it is. lyrics too. It's what? just it's very minimal lyrics too. He's just <laughs> like, what's the matter you got your no respect? Who do you think you are? Yeah. Ah, shut up here. Yeah. But as a kid, you know, hearing that was awesome. You know, hearing someone say shut up your face <laughs> as a kid. And my my siblings and cousins, we all got a good laugh out of that. But you know, he's racist. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll have some recommendations now. <laughs> Not that song. <laughs> I'm going to recommend a documentary that came out in September. It's called TikTok Boom. And it's about the app <clears throat> TikTok. It goes into a little bit of the history of it, <clears throat> uh, where it came from. And it also looks at how it works, the algorithm. I don't have I don't have TikTok. I've never had it. I don't use it, but I thought this documentary was interesting because it explains it a little bit and it it also looks at some of the influencers on that app and some of the security issues. It's owned by a Chinese company. Um and there's a neat story within the documentary about how you uh Thousands of TikTok users pranked Donald Trump during the 2020 uh, campaign, like a presidential election campaign, and then how Donald Trump subsequently tried to ban the app, but didn't really <clears throat> end up banning it. Although it may still get banned, who knows? But, J-pop uh, stands, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a pretty cool little documentary. You can see it. I believe it's streaming on the app. Freebie or the Freebie and also the PBS app. Um, so yeah, check it out if you can. Um, I'd like to recommend a movie called Nomad Land with um, Francis McDormand. Came out last year. Uh, it's really cool. It's about this woman, uh, Francis McDormand's character. Uh, was living in a town where like a gypsum factory closed down and her husband died and like it says in the very beginning like they even like dissolved the zip code of that town um, so she she just started like living in her van and traveling and she meets up with these people and it's it's funny because it kind of has like a documentary style at times um, and then you find out that a lot of the actors are actually people who do who do live in their vans and like travel around and there's a, a community across the country of people um and it's interesting because it, it's almost it almost feels like it's a bunch of like vignettes it's like a bunch of like little stories happening it doesn't seem to be this like overall arcing thing but um i don't know it's, it's good it's it's it looks like i said it feels like a documentary at times but then you remember it's like oh that's francis mcdormand not a documentary. 
So no matter. Have you, have you looked on YouTube? Because there's a bunch of video uh, videos about pe those people and they give tours of their vans and how they fix them up and everything. Yeah. And if, Chris, if uh, one Chris of the main Chris guys in that movie, movie uh, he has like a huge YouTube following and he interviews a lot of people who, who, who do this. So if you're interested in learning more, you can search on YouTube and you'll find a lot of videos. I'm interested in living in a van, honestly. Down by the river? Yeah. <laughs> you can be by a river, you know, Chris far. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's all. Okay. Um, I'm going to recommend, uh, related to my uh, song, I'm going to recommend you listen to the complete Underwater Moonlight LP because there's quite a few great songs on there, including the opening track called I Want to Destroy You. Um, We'll provide a link to the uh, on, on online playlist. You can listen to it. And also listen to uh, Joe for, uh, suggested the correct use of soap, uh, a great album, and it has the song shot by both sides on it, which is really good. Dean, you have any more you want to throw no, that's, in? That's it. That's my recommendation. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm keeping my recommendation short this week. I know I usually have thousands of them, but uh, I've been busy, so I'm going to keep it down to one thing. All things Skip Reming. Um, for those of you who don't know, there was a show on Adult Swim that ran for about two years. I think from 2013 to 2015, it was called News Readers. And part of News Readers was a sort of parody of Andy Rooney called Skip Reming. And Skip Reming was played by Ray Weiss, who you folks might know from Twin Peaks, or from there was a show called Reaper where he played the devil. And he is amazing as Skip Reming. Skip Reming is this old racist, misogynist, you know, news reporter. And they just bring him in for commentary. A lot of the commentary are short. They're like a minute and a half long. And it's just him ranting about like what's cool and what isn't cool or porn. The porn one's pretty amazing. But there are two longer ones where he talked we're about six minutes long and they're amazing. One where they put him on a plane for the first time in like 35 years. And again, he is racist and misogynist to everybody he comes in contact with. And there's also one where they send him to a wedding. And if you thought Joe Dulce was an effrontery to the using an Italian accent, wait till you find out what happens when Skip Reming, Reming finds out there's an Italian family at the wedding. It is the most shockingly horrifying yet uh, funny. And Ray Weiss just, just plays this horrible character so well. So I'm, I was really impressed. And I, I've forgotten about them. I was feeling kind of bummed and I was watching them. And I guarantee if you need to pick yourself up and laugh at something horrible, Skip Reming, we'll put a couple of uh, links in the thing, like three of them, two of the longer ones, one of the shorter ones. And, and I recommend you cheer yourself up by watching those. Thank you.